Trust, trust. All right, guys, welcome to another session of Tech Tuesday. Uh, Tech Tuesday is a program that uh, Code RGB uh, has. Code RGB is a 501c3 nonprofit that uh, its mission is to kind of make tech entrepreneurs and, and inspire people in technology and, and to, to learn tools that uh, those of us that work in the trade can, are actually marketable tools. And um, so, you know, today we're going to talk about a program that Code RGB has called Boot. Uh, that's that's our first speaker, and then we have uh, Ruben, who's going to be talking about a, a startup that he has. Um, so, you know, other than other than Boot, uh, Code RGB has five of the programs. And to just kind of run, you know, the ten thousand foot level of what they all are, uh, Tech Tuesday uh, is the the last Tuesday of the month, and uh, we have another program called Code RGB Academy, and uh, that's first and third Thursday of the month. And uh, the, the object behind that, that program is that it's a, it's a lot like this where you have a, a speaker, but the speaker uh, has, a, has some hands-on tools. And so usually we'll bring a laptop and, and we'll all kind of work together and, and either solve a project or, or learn a new skill and learn, learn some type of popular software. Or, or sometimes we just talk about uh, things like Scrum and, and things of that nature. But um, the, that's just kind of a hands-on. Uh, usually that's sponsored by Pizza Hut. Uh, we had a LNF distributor also is our, our sponsor for that. Um, we have another program called Cal, which uh, a couple of y'all, I'm going to kind of repeat myself a little bit, sorry about that. But Cal is, a, is our second generation mobile program. Um, what we've done is we had a, an RV that we bought uh, last year that uh, called uh, Tech Bus. And we, um, we, we was basically a big RV, we gutted it out, we put 20 workstations in it, Raspberry Pis, and uh, it goes out to Colonias and teaches kids how to teach code, how to how to do code and like code.org and things and digital literacy and things of that nature. Um, after we raised money for it and and uh, and and kind of teched it out, we donated it over to the to the, the Far Boys and Girls Club, and they've kind of taken it over since then, and they've manned it every single day and and uh, going out to the public with it and have programs that, are, uh, that go around it. Um, we decided to do it with the success of that program. We decided to do another one. Uh, that one, this new one's called Cal. And uh, it's called Classroom on Wheels. It's got a very similar mission, except for the fact that instead of 20 workstations, it only has 10 workstations in the front. And then in the back, we've created a VR room. Uh, we've, we've bought uh, 15 40-inch uh, 4K TVs, and uh, we put them in a 180-degree circle and 180-degree uh, half circle, and uh, and we've you know kind of paneled up the walls and all that stuff with the with these TVs. And uh, we're doing we're we're broadcasting uh, Google. Uh, Google Expedition, and if you all aren't familiar with Google Expedition, what they've done is they've, they've taken this Google Maps uh, type of, of software and cameras and done this 360 view, but with uh, places in Paris and, and all over the world and very popular museums like the Louvre and the Met, and uh, you know, they, they have some very cool concert halls and things of that nature. And so what we're, we're kind of doing in the back there is we're creating this immersion into those areas, and again, these, these uh, Mobile units are going out to colonias and and kid, and teaching kids and it goes all to all sorts of places, but um, the the thought there is to to kind of get them out of the colonia for a little bit and and teach them that there's something outside the world, but at the same time getting them interested in technology and, and inspiring them to to work with tech. And uh, if you know we have one person that goes out and and you know is successful, uh, you know, uh, Bill Gates out of that that'd be awesome. Um, but a couple of the other programs that we have is um, 
We have Code Camp, which maybe you all have seen uh, over at the McAllen Library. Uh, that one's for teenagers, and uh, that's a program with the McAllen Library in order to get uh, kids uh, interested in, in coding. And um, we had a program where we just uh, bought some snap circuits with the KURV, and they made an AM radio. Uh, that's kind of more of the engineering electrical side. Um, and they, they were able to broadcast on the radio and listen to themselves on the radio and do a bunch of so cool stuff there. Um, another program that we have is uh, the boot camp, which you all are going to hear about. And um, we're also, we also have, uh, oh, damn. Yeah, the, I think that, oh, I don't know how, which one I'm, which I'm missing, but I'm probably missing one. But we're all, we're all very busy at, at Code RGB. Uh, we're all volunteers. None of us are paid. Uh, this is all kind of just a, the kindness of our hearts. Um, you know, you're going to hear also how Boot is also uh, a free program. You actually also get paid to go through it. Um, but uh, those of us in the technology industry and, and that have gone through, uh, you know, years and years of working in technology, uh, this is kind of our hobby and our way to give back to the community. And uh, we really, really enjoy doing it. And seeing faces like you guys, especially knowing that you all are, are just kind of starting up and, and and a lot of the folks here are, are in classrooms. Um, it's really inspiring to see you guys just kind of starting out. I wish I was back in your seat again. But from that, I'll start over to Joel and, and let him talk about Boot. Great. Uh, thanks for having me here tonight. Uh, my name is Joel Garza. And uh, I am being asked to speak about the boot program. I'll give you my perspective as a student, and then I'll kind of let you know how the next cohort is going to look. As Renee has already covered these other items, uh, boot is a 12-week intensive, immersive, full-stack uh, uh, web coding boot camp. It's uh, through a partnership of the Mission EDC and the Texas Workforce Commission through Workforce Solutions. The idea is uh, Omo Maldonado, who is the creator of this, was to create a curriculum that was influenced by people from the industry. What do people need to know to be a good entry-level junior uh, web developer? <coughs> it's free to eligible participants, and when you compare that to the cost of other boot camps, which range anywhere from ten to twenty-four thousand dollars and up, uh, that's a pretty good deal. And not only that, because of the funding, they're able to offer a small stipend to help offset like gas some other expenses that somebody might have, given that you are expected to be there you know, 10 hours a day uh, for the instruction. So the first cohort started uh, in July and just finished up in September. That uh, was for 10 students. The next cohort has 15 students, starts this coming Monday, and will run through the 23rd of December. So the idea here is to get all of the graduates employed. Through the, the program, it's uh, for a high-demand training grant. So the idea is to take people who are working in a capacity where they're either underemployed or unemployed and, and prepare them for a job in the high-tech industry, ideally using some, some layer of the, the full stack, whether it be a web developer, database administrator, or a server administrator within that. Um, so through the course of it, it was, as a full stack, we concentrated on Node and the JavaScript for the stack. So we had JavaScript for the client side, we used Node for the application server. We used ExpressJS as the, the system to uh, maintain the web pages, and uh, we used Mongo as the database backend. So it was a very interesting thing because if you haven't had experience with JavaScript before, it can be quite an, an awakening if you jump right into that. Uh, Node is an asynchronous environment, and when you just jump in and start writing code, thinking you're learning JavaScript, and you don't take that into account, um, it's, it's it's kind of a surprise. It was a a very much a fire hose approach. It was as much as you can drink, as fast as you could. Uh, we started out um, pretty much getting people off to the right to the same starting point. So we did some exercises in Bash, get people familiar with the command line, doing some of those exercises. Uh, studied with Git to use for versioning and uh, collaboration for that. Um, from there, we moved on to HTML and CSS using selectors, CSS3, and a lot of exercises related to that. Uh, a really interesting part of the program was though we had an overall curriculum, a lot of the, the, the curriculum itself had interspersed within it a lot of online resources that are available. 
So that did a couple of things. It, it kind of brought in some different perspectives on how people explain things. Uh, it gave people a chance to see tutorials written by different people who may have different learning styles. It also got you used to working with those because when you're in a technical environment, the technology is changing so quickly that you can't always rely on a textbook to get the job done. So you had to really learn how to go look for these tutorials, how to understand and make sense out of them. Um, part of the things that we learned with a lot of developers that put code out there is documentation can take a second seat. And so you'll find this really cool API or library or framework that you want to use, but perhaps the documentation is kind of light. So you're forced to have to go in and start looking at the code itself to see how it works so that way you can know how to use it. Um, a good example of looking at code to see how it uh, works and how it learns is uh, the uh, algorithm.js package. It has a lot of uh, data structures and algorithms that you would study in computer science implemented in there. And students who had not had a computer science background were able to kind of reinforce their Java learning by looking into those and, and seeing how that all worked together. Uh, from there, after moving into uh, actual using Node and Express.js, uh, we did Mongo database to learn how document uh, document object databases work. Uh, we spent just a little bit of time going over SQL, but really wanted to focus on things that are being used uh, uh, at more of the, the more, I guess, fast-paced startups. And so they kind of shoo SQL a little bit, but it was emphasized that SQL is still, uh, or relational databases are still very important for transactional systems that you require on, um, you know, the ACID uh, compliances being as far as atomicity and, and those kinds of things. Um, from there, we moved on to uh, doing a little bit of React and looking at Redux, but by that time, everyone's head was ready to explode when we were working on our final projects. And that's where I think we really got interested in what we were doing, because as we were doing exercises all along the way, um, in preparation for this, the final project was a four-week project that would be the capstone. And uh, we ha I have some uh, examples of the projects here that were done. So one of the students was a graduate from UTRGD, graduated with a bachelor's in electrical engineering, had done some C programming, um, some Verilog and things related to engineering, but had never really done any uh, web coding. And so through this program, they learned enough to be able to build uh, this website that they were um, targeting for the city of McAllen. They had worked at the, uh, the city pools as a lifeguard and they recognize the types of things that go into scheduling and keeping track of things related to the pool. And so what they built was a website where you go to the website and it shows you the current status of the pools, whether they're open or closed, what type of program is in place, whether it's lap swim or free swim. Um, it gives a current weather report from using one of the weather APIs. Then it has an administrative interface where they could go in and either start or close a program, uh, again, like whether it's free swim or lap swimming. And then to also keep track of things like the pH of the pool, the number of people in the pool, uh, and some other pieces of data that they would collect. So now all of this can be collected in the system to generate reports that previously are just used on paper. So she's still continuing to enhance it a little bit, and hopefully they'll be able to take advantage of it. So there's certainly uh, some use for it. The uh, second project was uh, um, somebody had taken an interest in the boot camp application process itself. They felt as one of the people that maybe hadn't had uh, uh, a bachelor's or an associate's, had some college, but went on to do some other things, that they felt it was important that those people had a, a chance to be discovered through the application process because just because you didn't go through four years of academic training didn't mean that you weren't ready to do this kind of a thing. In fact, kind of a side story is uh, I worked for a short while with a gentleman who used to play in a band, he was a drummer, had played with uh, Edie, uh, Lisa Loeb and had played on various TVs as a drummer and one day he decided he wanted to code and then went and taught himself C and now he's working for Google. So he was in IBM research for a while. So there's, that's a very real opportunity for people and try to discover those talents and be able to help them get to the next level. So he was working on the application process that would take people through asking the questions, but then also make it easier for people who are reviewing those applications to try to rank them. And so the idea is as he continues that, that it's something that potentially could be used uh, by Google itself or one of these uh, or another camp. And then through this, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, the emphasis as we're doing this is in use of open source technologies is also turning around and sharing these technologies so other people can take advantage of it. So hopefully these projects do.
Um, a networked Loteria game, which was, was actually kind of exciting because that's an idea that I've had for a while and wanted to do, and someone just couldn't figure out what to do. I was like, hey, well, what about this? And so what he did is he used a, a, a library called Phaser, which is a, a game library, and used that kind of as the basis for starting this. And he ended up really implementing a lot of it just using uh, HTML canvas and some other technologies. So on the one hand, you have someone that connects to the website, starts the game, and that creates a deck and source the deck, and then it generates a code, and then other players get that code, put that into their mobile device, and then it generates a board. And you can have people join the game, either you're all in the same room and you just need some extra cards, or you have somebody who's in San Antonio and they want to play along. So he didn't want to remove all of the playability that really makes playing Loteria fun, so you still have to put beams on your screen as, uh, as you call it the cards. But that was a good use of uh, sockets and basically setting up the network aspects of, of having that and maintaining those connections. Uh, so again, excited to see that one. The uh, Fashion Block platform, um, one of the folks who was, came with a biology degree had not really done a lot of programming. She had a lot of ideas for apps and showed one of the apps that they had mocked up. But when she tried to go out and find developers, she found out that either people weren't available, capable, or they were just too expensive. So it's kind of the approach of, well, if I can't find someone to help me do it, I'm going to have to do it myself. So she came and did the boot camp, did some additional study through uh, some additional tutorials that she picked up. And at the end, she made this uh, prototype of something that she wanted to make available for people who wanted to start their own fashion blog. And this would be a platform that many people could use, very similar to Pinterest or uh, Instagram. So that was kind of exciting to see. The, uh, the next one, I should just look over here, uh, was a receipt OCR platform. And so what this does is it uses a library called Tessellator, uh, which is uh, an OCR library to take uploaded images, extract the text from it, and do an OCR recognition. He was thinking specifically about receipts, but it could be any kind of a document where you want to extract some information from it. He took advantage of the Google APIs to put the, the scanned information right into a, a Google Sheet that was embedded into the website. And that was a, another use of, and I didn't mention this before, is you, when you do get it full stack, you do not want to have to reinvent the wheel if, if you can avoid it. You want to try to use existing APIs or existing code that's already had a chance to be tested and, and put through the, the, the runnings to make sure that things are working. And then contribute back by modifying it to something that suits your needs better if it needs uh, improvement. Um, a GitHub Stats dashboard. So this was another API project where when companies interview candidates, they look at a number of different things. They'll ask you for your GitHub to see what your portfolio looks like. They may ask for samples of your work in production along with whatever else uh, you provide through the interview. So his idea was to take what you normally see on GitHub and condense it down and summarize it in a different way to make a dashboard for any given user. And you can either log in through a GitHub API to be able to pull the information yourself, or you could just type in someone's GitHub ID. Again, GitHub is a, 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 a service that provides a centralized location for you to take your local Git um, system from your phone um, and be able to uh, put that in place so other people can collaborate with you. And so that was kind of exciting because as a boot camp, as you look at candidates that you're vetting for you know, things that they've done, it's a way to pull that information and put it out in a format that you want to work with and so other companies could use it as well. So there was some interest in that. And one of the, the other, uh, the last ones I have here was a service management application for somebody that does repairs. Uh, it's a way for people who need to report the repairs to commit the repair to track those um, to update that information with any services or parts any services performed or parts used, and to be able to generate invoices from that. And so again, these were primarily all part of a node and the express stack. Um, if you ever go and look at different kinds of stacks, you may have heard of, of LAMP, which is the Linux, um, Apache, MySQL, uh, Perl, PHP, Python stack. Uh, this would probably be closest to the mean stack, but we didn't use Angular because we had looked at React for that. So the idea going from here is, um, so are people getting jobs? 
So one of the students uh, left before the end of the program because he got accepted as, uh, as an intern into the U.S. Army through uh, some acronym that I don't know exactly what it means. And as he finishes the internship, then he'll be offered a full-time position uh, there. <coughs> I myself was invited and asked to be the instructor for the next cohort, so that worked out uh, worked out for me. Um, and then we have some other folks that are currently in negotiations with uh, some folks um, for uh, for positions. This received a lot of attention, so there's a lot of interest locally. Uh, we have uh, an owner of several radio stations who has ideas for projects and one of our students is working with him and basically he was asking for one thing she says well I think you can do it this way so she downloaded the software mocked up the prototype met with him showed him and now she's working with him that if she can make this and implement it that she'll be offered a, a full-time job through that um, his response to that has been so good that he wants to try to hire more students and potentially do something on a, on a grander scale uh, once uh, we get more folks available for that. And there's also uh, some other things in the in the wings as far as projects that if we can prototype through this, that it may turn into full-time jobs for the students of this next cohort. So that's also kind of pretty exciting. So, but what we do need is we need to know where more companies are who can hire some of these full-stack developers for people who are looking for jobs locally and then also in other areas like San Antonio, California, and whatnot. Um, we would also like to introduce into the program, in addition to the passion projects that several of the people chose as they chose their own projects, um, projects that already are pretty well defined. What is the need that somebody has? Uh, passion projects are cool because it's something you're interested in, but what was pretty obvious is that people are trying to work on this, they're like, well, what do I want it to do? Um, do I want it to do this? Do I want to do that? So you end up spending some time brainstorming and kind of sketching things out. And we think there's some significant value in having uh, an assignment that's given to you that says, okay, you need to just go ahead and do this. So don't think about all this stuff. Just figure out how you're going to get this part to work. The benefit of that is if we can find some companies that have some of these smaller projects that we can work on, it's a chance for them to kind of test out the, the students ahead of time to build a relationship and for the students to have some real work that they can add to their portfolio. Uh, throughout the course, we had guest speakers that came from uh, a number of different places uh, through contacts that Omo had and also through uh, a gentleman named Michael Barnes who uh, recently moved to the Valley who uh, has involved in some startups of his own but has a lot of connections. Uh, one of the speakers that they were able to get through Skype, his name was Hasid, and what we learned uh, about him was from a blog article that was shared uh, probably about a week before is this is somebody who started out at a code camp worked their way through code camp then became a CA at the code camp was asked to be a full-time employee of the code camp for a short while but he was just so anxious to go work for one of the Silicon Valley giants and uh, through that process the long story short is, is he, he negotiated a, a compensation package of $250,000 a year from Europe and it was kind of interesting to hear that perspective, uh, perspective from him full time. Uh, we had a guest speaker from uh, a large marketing agency in Mexico City that came and, and did a demonstration of how they use Python and Django to build the websites for, uh, for a large car company in, uh, in Mexico. Um, we had somebody from Wolfram Alpha. We had an astrophysicist, or I believe, from UT. Uh, we had uh, somebody who works as an intern at Uber for the summer who came to help with interview preparation, resume, uh, technical interview coaching. Um, another gentleman who has worked with a company in Silicon Valley called Clover. And at first you think Clover, I've never really heard of Clover, we've heard of some other things, but if you go to any IDC bank in the Valley, they sell a point of sale system that's Android based, and that's Clover. So that's some pretty serious stuff. And so what's helpful with these contacts is now this is our foot in the door to other places. And uh, as they did some interviewing with the students, any students that they felt were um, capable of passing through a Silicon Valley interview are referred on to those companies as, as potential candidates. So we want to continue to kind of build more of that, of these connections. And as people become more aware of the program and they see the graduates and what they're able to do, um, not having, you know, years of experience in, in developing for the web, especially at the full stack level, that it should only 
person to expand upon that. Um, beyond that, the grant that was in place for this year is there's still money is available for next year, so the idea is that we'll apply for that. But we, but Code RGD will work with Mission EDC and uh, look for solutions to apply for that for next year, so that way we can reach properties next year as well. Um, so for the, the uh, yeah, so this is one of this is a, an employer presentation, but. So how do we get these speakers? Well, one of the ways is we incentivize them. It's like, look, we're doing some really great things down here with Code RGD, so it's just a good feeling and a good thing to do. But by the way, if your company won't pay for you to come down, well, Code RGD will, through the grant, be able to pay for tickets and hotel stays so you can come down and, and do that. So that gives us access to these industry experts to be able to teach us uh, things both, um, directly. So uh, with that, um, I'm pretty excited about the next 12 weeks. We had 14 of the students go through eligibility today, and uh, we're starting on Monday. Uh, some small changes. Uh, we're gonna try to introduce a little more Python into the program. Uh, part of that is Python is a very viable full stack option for back end. Uh, also, I think Python has a lot of applicability outside of web programming, so it just makes you a more versatile programmer. I also think from a syntax perspective, and I'm wearing the shirt, uh, that Python is more readable. So as we focus on learning some concept, it's nice to not have to have the language get in the way while we learn the concepts. And then once we, once we understand the concepts, we can jump over and do the same thing in Node to make sure we still have a well-rounded uh, introduction to these types of technologies. Does anyone have any questions about the program itself? And the whole thing is in English. The whole thing in English? Um, yeah, so it's... <laughs> yeah, so it was a really cool program. There was uh, about 800 applicants for the two programs. Uh, we had, uh, we accepted uh, 25 out of them. Um, and we did 10 uh, in the first cohort. And then now we've, uh, we're gonna take on 15 this, this second session. And um, I'll tell you that, uh, that it's been really cool to watch some of these folks that, that had no programming experience before coming in and then coming in and, and, and creating these projects that, where they basically coded this whole thing from, from the bottom up. Um, you know, everybody here is open to apply. Uh, the, the, like I said, it's, it's totally free. Uh, we, this, this particular cohort, we're, we're gonna be offering, I think, a, about a $1,500 stipend uh, to go through it. Um, we, uh, we're hoping that uh, through the community, we're, we're one of the things, one of the cool things we're gonna be trying to do for the students is uh, we've, we've already started to open this for what we're calling bounties. And um, I, I know that the company that I work for, we've already put, we've already put a bounty out there for it. So, uh, you know, as, as a project, as a class project, we're gonna show all of these different bounties that companies have and how much they're willing to pay for it. And, um, and if you wanna take on the bounty in the class, you can, and, and you can make a little extra money by, by doing that one project on the bounty. So um, we, you know, through my contacts, through uh, through our contacts, all through the Code RGV, we've really reached out to, to people all over uh, Mexico and the United States. Uh, Silicon Valley has, has sponsored us on some stuff. I mean, we've, we, we, we go in contact, we, are, we keep in contact with GitHub, which is a huge uh, California company. And uh, if y'all don't know what that is, it's a, it's a software repository. And basically, um, if I'm working on a piece of software uh, for you, and, um, and, and my team is also working on it for you, we, can, we, can, we publish that code up to the, to the repository, uh, keeps track of the changes, keeps track of the collaboration, and at the end of it, you can, it there's, a, there's a spot for that, where that code lives. And um, so the, that's a huge part of, of the, of the you know, programming community. Uh, one of the one of the things that we really really stressed out in the booth was that not only are we teaching you how to how to get your foot in the door with code, but we're getting you very comfortable with the tools of coding, and and what that what that takes to, to become a coder and how to use tutorials and how to where to go get research on on how to get you know a particular problem solved, and uh, that's you know that's usually the best way how software gets built is that there's a problem that needs to be solved. So. Go. So, a question for you. Yes. So, you got uh, the students uh, doing great uh, projects, uh, and uh, 
you know, some of these are kind of uh, core, like the challenge and uh, the recreational department or something like that with the full one. Uh, but some of these have a chance to uh, be a start to some kind of standalone business. Uh, you're providing students some kind of uh, structure, incentive. I don't, I'm looking here at your curriculum, you've got job applications, and it seems like you're setting them up for failure. They're going to get a job somewhere else, and, and perhaps there's some of those. Right, and, and that's actually a good point. So whether you go get a job for somebody or whether you start to work for yourself. And so uh, through the first cohort, I mean, Omo did approach that, that if there was something where you could take off as a startup, you could probably go through with that. Uh, I think maybe for purposes of emphasizing as much of the job application process as we do is if these are people who are just kind of starting through, that this would be a chance for them to get an entry level job to be able to work to help finance their startup. It, he kind of described to us when you go through the regular startup process and with VCs and everything, it kind of changes the dynamics of everything. But as far as programs like that, that's funny you mentioned that because I have shared with the team about a program called Hive Effect, which uh, helps people start businesses and, um, and, and kind of get along that path. So we do kind of want to emphasize both of those and give them the option to see which, which way they want to lean a little bit further. One of the things we're doing here at the university is with the entrepreneurship program. We have an entrepreneurship major now, and uh, the students are going through a class where they're using their student learning launch pad methodology. Uh, and if you've got, uh, you know, if students going through this program, you see a couple of us learn how to build a tent for a startup. Uh, we just uh, do the market research and kind of test the sure. uh, business model as part of that class. So, uh, and that actually should take a couple of the best and send them my way. I'd be happy to work with them. And that could be a very interesting collaboration because you need developers and people with ideas, they have people with ideas who need some help with, with marketing and whatnot. So, One of the really cool things that uh, we're doing with the boot camps is we're bringing in speakers every week uh, from all over, like like you mentioned, Wolfram Alpha and, and you know and Clover and, and all these other different co cool companies. Um, we're, we are now uh, going to make them come to either Tech Tuesday or Coder, uh, the, the Coder to be Academy that we have. Uh, so they'll they'll be doing some instruction during the day with the, the boot camp students, and then in the evening they're going to join us in these in, in these Tech Tuesdays in Code RGB. So uh, one of the really cool things is that uh, if you all keep coming to these uh, sessions that you'll have for the past couple of years, uh, the, the there's going to be uh, some really cool faces in front of you of, of people that have done uh, some remarkable things and, and worked at some really cool companies, and you get to ask. Uh, questions and, and meet them afterwards, and um, maybe have a, go have a drink after them after after this with them. But um, that's that's kind of a, what I wanted to kind of emphasize that you know the we what we talked about and we in Code RGB and, and and the structure of Tech Tuesday is that we really need to leverage some of the, the other programs that we have uh, together, and that was one of the ideas is that. You know, we are bringing in, we are flying in at the expense of, of uh, the boot camp to, to get these folks in. Let's take full advantage of them. Any questions? Is there any more information about like, the bounty kind of aspect of everything? Like, will they give you like. You tell me how much you're willing to pay, tell me what you want, build on the bounty board. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we're at Code RGB. One of the really cool things is that it's us. You know, uh, there's it's me, Joel, Drew, uh, Dr. Sargent, who, who who does this. I mean, we're here. We this this is our. Nobody else is looking over over our shoulder saying you can't you can't do anything. Um, let's do it. I'm, we're open for all ideas. I know Anthony is a is a is a big uh, Code RGB Brownsville guy. We we do the same thing that uh, we do here in McAllen. We also do it. In, uh, in Brownsville, here in McAllen, we do it in the C building admission, which is a really, really cool tech house uh, building admission. Not, I'm going to introduce the next speaker. Uh, Ruben, Ruben just, uh, just got back from San Antonio or Austin. 
um, and uh, San Antonio or Austin? San Antonio. San Antonio. And uh, he, he's going to be talking about a, a startup, and he kind of went through uh, uh, some, some cool experiences while he was in San Antonio, and I'll let him uh, kind of tell you all a little bit about uh, his experiences and what, what he's doing. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I, won't, I won't make my cell phone. Uh, I'm Ruben. I'm from Monterrey, Mexico. Actually, I arrived for the Valley this year. Uh, first, uh, very excited to be here with you guys talking. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, it was uh, so quick, but I, I have fortunately I could arrive late night, and I'm here uh, very happy talking to you. Uh, I'm proud to say that I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, a little bit from my background, I studied mechatronics and robotics in Monterrey, in the University of Monterrey. And I started a couple of projects while studying. My, my first business experience was I was selling farm chips to local stores. So that's when I was at first in touch with the Czechs and with people, and I love that. So I was uh, dedicating myself, my life, in being an entrepreneur. Um, I took a couple of boards in technology because, because that's the industry I've always loved. And I worked at Siemens as a, during my thesis. And I quit because I didn't handle being a, in a laboratory for six months. And then I, I started my, my own business, which is a web development. And this is my company here. It's served by Surface. Um, we have operations in Monterrey. Uh, that's where the power team is now. But I'm exploring uh, new opportunities here. That's why I moved to, to the Valley. Um, I just, I'm going to be very quick on this part. What I really want to talk to you is about why is uh, we as an entrepreneurs, why is so important and it's our responsibility to be part of the community and contribute with everything we can. Like these programs uh, Joel have mentioned, Coder Trees, um, it's truly important to be part of it because that's how community grows. So basically, uh, what's something that Joel said, uh, it is hard to find capable and not expensive uh, web development uh, that's why we're here. Uh, we, we can reduce some cost by having operations in Mexico, and we can offer that uh, to many companies. So I had a chance to uh, present on the, the, besides the company, I had a, a project on the side that I'm just starting, uh, and I had a chance to present it on the startup weekend this, uh, this last weekend in San Antonio. Uh, let me explain you how that program works. Uh, a lot of all the attendees have an opportunity to present an idea, and the best ideas win. So all of the people that are attending uh, join either of the teams, and they develop the idea to a business model and a pilot in just over one weekend. Uh, fortunately, my idea was uh, out of forty, was uh, one of uh, the first eight. So I had the responsibility of building the pilot in in the first uh, in those three days. Uh, let me uh, show you what my idea was and what it is. Uh, as you know, I'm not a U.S. citizen, so I've been uh, doing visas my whole life here. So I, I already know the process of tourist, uh, business, student, you name it, I've already uh, been there. So the, the idea that I present in San Antonio was something I call visa school. So you have uh, two options. Of uh, what do you, you hold on? Just a second. All right. So when you want to go to a conference, I'm going to explain a little bit first about the problem, so you can understand this because probably you're not familiar with that. Suppose that you have a an amazing trip that you always wanted to do or, uh, to Asia, right, or any any place. So the only thing missing is your visa. And you will go, you will go by yourself to a website and you find out that the visa application is in Chinese. That's how what happens to Mexicans. They all the applications are in English. Fortunately, some people can speak it, but unfortunately, many people can't. So there are a lot of consequences. I mean, first you get the application. Uh, you have to attend an interview to an official to get accepted to your visa. So it is get, getting uh, complicated, and the consequences are terrible. I mean, people can get separated from their families, right? So 
that's the big problem that uh, people like me in Mexico, we are facing. And what I propose is uh, a platform, a smart platform called Visa School, which basically, I'm gonna show you a quick video. Uh, in this video, that's uh, what we developed in the, in the two days that we were participating on the program. So, basically we, we get rid of the forms. Uh, we don't want people to use uh, forms because there, there's a lot of uh, mistake range and they can get their visas canceled. So we propose something, uh, another lot of, a platform called TurboTax that is some people use for taxes. That's basically what I want to do for visa. So people, you just can go to a platform and ask a simple question in a friendly way and the system automatically grabs all the data and with an algorithm that put it on the, the digital form and just send it over or submit it online. So that's make, that makes it uh, very easy to apply for visas. So something else that I, I proposed was uh, something that doesn't exist, a test that can uh, tell the attendees if they have a chance to get a visa. Uh, because if they don't, they, uh, the, there's a limited uh, amount of uh, uh, mm, time that you can apply for the visa. So it's not worth it in case you not get accepted. So, so we propose that too. Like I said, uh, answering easy questions. And something very important here, like. I, something I really like about this project is that when you enter, uh, when you apply for your visa, and you're waiting for the acceptance, you get into a period of desperation and doubt. So we we propose a video, a smart video feed, where uh, based on the questions and the answers that you provide, you can get uh, access to videos that are related to your case on other experiences you can get uh, more confident when you attend the interview for your application. So, okay, it's, as you can see, it's something very, it's not a functional, this, uh, it's just a pilot to present the idea that we work on. But uh, generally that's the idea, uh, making the uh, visa process accessible and reliable and easy for everyone so that there is uh, no problem to people to come here and work or get a job or go to, go to uh, any school, okay? So, with that, uh, fortunately with this project, uh, we, we, we got a good place, uh, and we present that, and something that I, what I'm doing here, like contributing to the community, is something that we did uh, in that event. 10 people from the team, our team in Monterey came to this event, but they don't work in this project. They work in different projects for many startups. And why we uh, want to do that? Because uh, we didn't want to just want the prize or, or, or be uh, like the most amazing platform in one weekend. We want to help other entrepreneurs that were having ideas to develop them. So that's, that's how um, can we, that's how we contribute to the community. And I think that's totally important. So basically, that's the idea I was proposing. Uh, that's my company, and that's what I do. So what? Next step for the project. Good question. Uh, I came with this idea two weeks ago. I didn't know what we were going to develop so so quick. So I have to take a break one day to figure out what's the next step. What's the next step? How did you make the mock-up? How did you make the mock-up? Uh, what we, framework? I'm not pretty sure. Okay. Uh, uh, the designer who developed the take care was facing the, the business model, and I didn't. I just get got the video, and we. It was so fast that we couldn't. I couldn't get my hands on it. So did you have to go in front of like a panel of folks, or how yes. did that work? And what kind of questions did they ask you? They uh, they asked more about the business model, how this platform makes money and how, uh, if it's legal or if it, it will have any legal problems. 
that's where you know, it's more oriented. It's not the development is just something you put on, on the presentation and they uh, kind of show how it works. Yes, uh, I've worked in projects on Siemens. I, I created a, a machine that tested uh, the mechanics of, I don't know how to call it, the switches. So that's a, that was a, a robotics project. But I, I also worked in platforms uh, for uh, telecommunications and real estate that we, we can provide uh, cobertura, I don't know how to say, range for cell phones. Tower. Using, yeah, yeah, using the and many systems. So uh, I've worked in different projects from different industries, but mostly uh, software development. What, uh, what business model got first place? What was their idea? Uh, the first place was uh, a platform where you can buy uh, cars and bid for them. And the best price uh, got the opportunity to buy it. Was it provided with CPAC? Oh. And the judges were just provided with CPAC? Yes, and uh, that's, that's the part that I truly believe that's why we didn't win, the legal part. We, we, didn't, uh, we didn't have the opportunity to talk to many lawyers in that period of time, and we didn't uh, uh, have a clear uh, path of we were going. That's what it was. So they were worried about the risk of the legal risk behind the, the program? More about the legal risk, how you can fix fit properly without elevating the cost. Very cool. So this is design camp for Mexicans. Uh, do you want to do stuff in the States or you're trying to make this kind of multinational operation? Good, good question. On the, on the first phase, uh, we are thinking about just Mexico and just one visa. There are like more than 20 visas. But it can be escalated to any country that needs a visa to come to the United States. All, basically, the algorithm works the same. You just have to change the questions in the language. Anybody have any questions about what to how to take a product to to VCs or you know, um, you know, a process or anything like that? Thank you, Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yep. So, Dr. Fowler, what class is this? What class are you teaching? I'm teaching classes in information technology systems. So, it's people who are um, interested in the technology side of things, but they're not In this room, and I'm looking around. Uh, there's a there's some very experienced IT people in this room. Is there uh, anybody in here who has a question about uh, jobs in IT or uh, career paths or uh, technology in general? I'm not going to be deep. I'm not going to answer how to fix a virus or something. Like that. But, um, but uh, you know, I'm I'm an infrastructure person. I'm I'm more interested in uh, data centers, and uh, I I. Um, you know, I, I'm more in the networking side of things, but uh, you know, over the years, it's, it's gravitated me towards a more management position, and uh, so now I'm worrying about data centers and budgets and personnel and projects. So, um, does anybody have any questions on, on IT in general or anything? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I find myself. I, I work at home. My my, my background.
Well, you know, I, I don't have the immediate answer, but I'm going to tell you that that um, that's what that's what we talk about all the time. That, uh, so so today, you know, we're we're more in a you know, I guess a more classroom auditorium setting. Uh, but the two time a month two hundred degree uh, event is more like all of us sitting around talking about how things get done in the technology uh, technology world, whether it's coding, whether it's engineering. Um, you know whether it's you know I, I, I we always gravitate towards the business side and, and the and you know project management side and things of that nature. But uh, there's there's all sorts of people that come to Code RGB. We have uh, a mailing list out there of three. It, it's a lot larger. It's about 500 pe people or so. Good 250 to 300 or, fo or so folks come regularly to, to our stuff. Either you know once every over the month or, or something to that effect. But we see the same faces, and a good core group of, of, of folks are always there, and um, there's always somebody new, uh, and, and it's a pretty friendly group. Uh, it's a bunch of IT people and uh, a bunch of nerds, and uh, 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 guys and girls are both all there. Uh, we even have uh, uh, a, a chapter that came and, and talked to us that called uh, Women Who Code, and I uh, did hear something, I saw something in one of our chat channels because we have a, a large Slack channel uh, that, that we were talking, somebody wanted to start putting together the women who code here in town, code the, the chapter. Women. What's that? Code RGB women were formed in June. Okay. But, the, but there's an official national chapter called Women Who yes. Code. Yes. And I believe that there were some folks here that were trying to get that chapter here. Yes. Do, what did I see? Who did I see? Are you the one seeing it? Or was that Nedra? Was that you? We were, uh, I'm the one that just frogged them. I don't know what I'm talking about. They do. <laughs> I, I just saw that in one of the channels that go by you know, the past couple of days. So. Okay. Yeah, no, there's, there's conversations going on. There's a set of women that are engaged. And, uh, I, I was gone for part of the summer, so I did a good part of it. So I missed some of that and the, and the presentations that came. But um, there are, there are, we're just trying to get rid of that. <laughs> We'll, we'll, work, we'll work our magic. What, what's our your name? Uh, what's your name? Uh, Julio. Julio. I expect you to see. I expect to see you at a Code RGB event. And you can you can challenge the challenge the, the group. I mean, you know, we'll sometimes stay there, and uh, you know, we just moved from one building to another. We used to have a uh, beer sponsor at the other one, so um, there was a lot of late night uh, talk about what how to change the world. So, yeah. So, yeah. Know, knowing what tools to get yeah. to your means is, is a big deal, and I know that um, I'm not a I'm not a software engineer in, in any kind of way. Uh, I know very little code. I know a little bit, but not enough to, to go get a whole job about it. But um, in the past year or so that I've been hanging out with a bunch of software engineers, um, I've learned a lot of tools that are out there, a lot of things, and 
And if you do, if you if you join our channels, you see all these people just kind of posting articles of things that, that are that how to do things or, or things that are cool and, and things that you need to be up to date with if you're in the IT industry. And um, that that's what's kind of you know always kind of driven us as volunteers to that we're all a bunch of like-minded people that are that are talking about the, the same thing and and what we all are very passionate about. Um, so so yeah, I mean, come and and you know present the challenge, talk to us. The, the, you know, we can always connect to, to, to other people. A lot of us in the code RGB, there's, there's a lot of uh, people that are in the industry that are part of our organization that um, are, are mentors and things of that nature. I mean, I know that uh, Renan Ramirez, who's the, who's the IT director for the county, for Hidalgo County, he, he's done some mentorship with, with the boot and has volunteered and, and, and you know, basically opened up all of us to basically say, what do you want, what do you need to know? And maybe I'll connect you with the people. Uh, Diana Berger, who with NetSync, who's uh, she's she's also a, a, a software. Engineer. She started as a software engineer, I believe, and then uh, she now works for a large networking company that has contracts with with the schools here locally called NetSync. Um, there's there's a lot of people involved in the organization that are that have been around for a long time, and at the same time, there's a lot of people that are in the same shoes as you guys that, that are just starting, and um, there's a lot larger IT community in the valley than what you think there was. That's what we learned. We 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 all we all first started this with a, a small group of about five to ten people, and we started meeting at the museum. And the museum wanted to close at eight o'clock, and we kind of wanted to keep on going. And then uh, the space was too small, and so then we got bigger and bigger and bigger. And now at our, our at our academy meeting, we're having 50, 60, 75 people show up, and to just talk about IT stuff. And, uh, and you know now that has turned into community programs like Boot, Tech Tuesday. We have an on-campus student group called Code RGB Students um, that that'll be uh, helping out uh, helping out at HesTech coming up uh, next week or week after. Um, and so you'll see the cow at HesTech, and, and you'll see a bunch of Code RGBers running around HesTech if you all are interested in doing that. Um, if you all are, don't know what that is, it's a big tech show that the that the university sponsors. But uh, hopefully you guys will get more involved. You know, find me. Uh, you know, find us at coderngb.org. Uh, find us on Facebook, uh, TechTuesdays.co. Um, you know, the, the, you'll you'll find us if you just find if you type in coderngb.org uh, in anything, Twitter, Facebook, uh, you know, the web, um, and Slack. If you all if you are familiar with Slack, it's a collaboration tool, but it's MRC is, but it's an old IRC channel type thing. Um, there's very active, all the forums that we have uh, are very active with local folks. So there's a lot of local resources for people that are interested in technology and, and want to go forward and, and uh, learning more stuff. Excuse me, Dennis, can you talk a little bit about the ERP incident class? I mean, what, what do you, the driving, what, 15 monitors, 15 monitors? We had 15. 40 inch 4K TVs in there. Um, we have bought uh, a, a pretty powerful CPU uh, with a, um, it's got two video cards in it. The, the video cards allow up to 10 monitors each one. Uh, you bring them together uh, and, and it, it really kind of throws out some really big processing. Um, but beyond the, the technology, the hardware portion of it, uh, the, it's very, very simple because uh, once, once we can get the display on the TV, uh, we're just using a, a Google Chrome browser. And the Google Chrome, Chrome because it's a Google project, they've kind of optimized the Google Chrome uh, browser to kind of see all their stuff. And uh, we're using a, um, a, like a, a, it's a, a control from a Microsoft three, uh, 360, you know, we're using that as a mouse to kind of move around in that, that Google map view to turn and, and so on. Uh, we may have bought an Xbox One also for it to, to kind of play on it, um, but uh, that's the that's pretty much the technology driver behind it. It's, it's got a really nice CPU, big RAM. Uh, the the video card on it is really the, the driver for it. Um, we've we've played around with a couple of different technologies, and I'm not gonna lie, we don't have we we haven't gotten it 100 percent just yet to be extremely smooth. Um, we, there's there's some other technologies out there like video wall technology and stuff like that that's extremely expensive that just 
$5,000 and up just to get the components for it. And we've tried not to go that route, but uh, you know, if we have to do it, we have to do it. I mean, we're. Do you need goggles or anything? Uh, so we're not doing the goggles. So, so um, I'll, I'll tell you the, the cow right now, so if you, I kind of told you that it's being wrapped right now. Uh, the, the, the construction that's happening on the inside, that's what it looked like today. As we were, I was sitting here, uh, the guys that are wrapping it texted me what it looked like. But um, that's, a, that's kind of a side view of what, you're, what, what it is. But um, they, we gutted it out at my house. And, uh, they, and so they're, they're building the countertops and they're making the video wall on it right, right now as we speak. I mean, they're, they're, the, the flooring guy is, is, hasn't given me a quote on, on the floor yet. So um, it's all being built right now. And all of us, uh, we've had volunteers at a group called uh, Santa Cruz Computers, I believe. That's, anybody familiar with them here locally? Um, they, they build gaming rigs and uh, they build gaming computers for folks. And uh, they do, one of the things that they do is, is build video walls for, for people here. So you'll see some of the billboards and stuff like that. So they're the kind of the, the force behind that. And uh, they volunteered. They said, let's try it. Let's do it. And uh, we'll go the inexpensive route first and see if it works out. And, uh, and if it doesn't, then we'll have to go a more expensive route. But, um, you know, this is one of those things where they're doing it for free. 290, 360? 180. Okay. Uh, so the way that it, the way that it is is the, the the, the design has the, the five, the five, you know, it's three by five. And so you have one and then two coming over to the side and then you have <laughs> some, some kind of stadium seating. Um, and that challenge is just because of the space that we have um, and how many people we want to put into it, into the, you know, if you gotta think this is going out to a Colonia, uh, you're gonna be able to fit three to four kids in there max and, um, and then, you know, you've got bandwidth, you know, we've got cellular bandwidth and stuff like that. Uh, but three or four kids max, and you want to kind of keep them rotating out and, and, and spending as much time as possible. Go for it. Um, one more question. So I teach uh, middle school, and we have a technology floor, and we have a science floor. And then we have a math class, and then we have Yes, uh, like I said, the, the bus is being built right now, so it's not ready. Uh, the the tech bus is it's it's going, and but but that one's being run by the Far Boys and Girls Club, and the Far Boys and Girls Club, you just call them up, and and you can you can go to their website and stuff like that, and try to book it and go there. I am more than happy to go to any spot and talk about it and bring it and so on, but uh, let me finish building it first so that uh, so we can do it. But um, I'm pretty excited because we're we're near the end. Our our goal from the very beginning was to get it to Heztech running, and uh, man, I'm I'm kind of close. At the at the very end, at the very, at the, at the very least, it's gonna look really nice on the outside. <laughs> uh, but uh, and and we have some we have some contingency plans that if we don't have the inside built out just yet. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm you know as we speak, and you know I have a job <laughs> other than doing code RGB. Um, I'm I'm having to field you know contractors and things of that nature. Uh, but the, all the technology in the bus and, and, the, and the, you know, all the solar panels and all the Wi-Fi and all that stuff, that's all being built by Code RGBers. And one of the idea behind that is that we have a lot of people that want to play with stuff. They want to see new toys, new stuff. And this is a, a way for us to play with toys on, um, on, on Code RGB's dime. And, um, but then when the bus goes out to teach these kids how to code and inspire them, you're going to see the videos and join us and come and, and watch that there's there's a really big joy in seeing these kids uh, light up and, and, and just you know just learning something like code.org I mean like uh, you know BB5 the moving from left to right and code.org it's a, it's a fun fun thing to watch so I encourage everybody to show up to one of our other um, you know meetings uh, Tech Tuesday is going to be here but it sounds like you all have class during Tech Tuesday so uh, that's not very fun yeah, um, and then if you all have any volunteers or you all want us to, to go talk somewhere or something like that, we're more than welcome to do it. So we usually uh, want to thank uh, Dr. Sargent, and uh, he has a, a, a department or what is it, a program called CEO, the Entrepreneurial Group. Uh, they're the ones that have uh, sponsored this Tech Tuesday for, for the past couple of years, um, and uh, very appreciative for that. He's the one that, that provides the room 
Um, and uh, we're, we're very, very happy to have that partnership with you guys. And uh, Dr. Sally also will enjoy. She's, she's a part of putting Tech Tuesday together too. So, um, yeah. <laughs> She, she provides the, <laughs> we, 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 we try to get as much information from everybody we can. Um, but uh, I, I do invite you guys uh, that after class, um, we do kind of go to the university draft house and uh, drink some water and some Cokes and, uh, and, you and talk about. You drink water, right? Yes, you did. You did, you did drink water last time. Uh, but uh, we do go there, just kind of hang out afterwards and, and talk about some other things. So thanks for, thanks for coming, guys. We do do live streams, so this was live stream today on Facebook. So, if for some reason you can't come, or... okay. You guys are going to sit in between blackboards. There's like programming instructions for Java and C++. I thought we were going to be doing those already, so I put them up there. But they shouldn't have. Do they have dates? Ignore them. If you get them. You're all better and you can help everybody else and you actually go. But remember something.